You wouldn't be concerned about the fundamentalist terror of Islam if you weren't driven by those essentially tribal considerations. No, I'm so not it, suggesting it's not that it's wrong. It doesn't require... If my... A mere identification with humanity it can ground not wanting to be murdered by people who are identified with a subset of humanity, right? Like, I, I don't need to be part of a smaller tribe to care that people will murder me over burning a Quran, right? It's, it, it's just, it's clearly counterproductive that we live in a society where some objects are held with such totemic attachment for irrational re reasons by many, many millions of people where, you know, uh, that you should be sympathetic with this. Our free speech is actually canceled on this point, right? I mean, yes. We literally can't produce cartoons. Look, I there have, are scholarly I have, works look, about the cartoon prices we, we, that don't show the cartoons. We have no argument whatsoever okay. so between if, us so about the lack of utility of you, certain... You don't have to be identified as a, as a Christian or a Jew to push back against that. You just have to be a human being that sees the dysfunction of a smaller I, a, a kind of provincialism. Well, the thing that I'm struggling with is that I still can't understand in what your ethos is, is, is grounded. Because you, you claim a, like a transcendental rationalism, but you won't identify the structures that produce it. It's a black box. And when I try to push you on the absolute nature of your ethical claim, which what? is that the bad life is worse than the good life, and that we should, in fact, universally work towards the good life, it doesn't seem to me that you'll accept the proposition that that's a universal claim. It, it, no, it is. It is well, I, should is irrelevant here. It's just the fact that there is the possibility of, of moving in this space. If you move in the wrong direction, if you mo move far enough, you'll like it less and less. But why right? is should g irrelevant? G give, given, the, given the minds you have, well, right? But, well, I what, thought what if, you had to, what if you had to accept moving in the wrong direction and experiencing less and less well-being in order to... To get to a better place. In, well, in, yeah. maybe even just to survive. Suppose, the, suppose a population has to endure a generation and a half yeah. of misery in order to persist yeah. for another e hundred ethically, years. Ethically, that's a perfectly intelligible circumstance that people have had to face. And it's... Uh, in my, on my moral landscape, it's analogous to, I mean, we're, we're, we might be at one local maximum or, so, or, or the, some high point, uh, but we're moving in a down a slope to get to yet some higher place, right? So certain things, only, some things may only be possible if we made some painful and net unpleasant sacrifice that's to get there. That's for sure. Yes. And so that, but that's, that can be rationally apprehended. There can be an argument for that. It could be, you know, we all, you know, we all have to go on a diet. Otherwise, we're going to, you know, we're, we're going to die of this problem, right? We all have to stop eating whatever it is, wheat, right? It's a hard sacrifice for people who have to stop it, as you know. Uh, if that were just true, well, then there'd be an argument for it. There'd be evidence that would convince us. We would stop. We would feel the pain, and we would, we would get whatever benefit that was on the other side of that sacrifice. But, again, you don't have to... If the utility, again, to come bring it back to stories which is, as you know, not my emphasis, but it is yours. The, the utility of stories is not something I'm arguing against. I mean, there's no question that certain stories are incredibly compelling, and in our conversation with one another, the moment you begin to frame something in terms of a story, people become much more interested, right? Like, if 90% if, if of what we said together tonight were framed, each each point we were making as a matter of philosophy or, or, or science were framed in, well, actually, you know, yesterday I was walking down the street and I met this guy, he's a terrifying looking guy, and all of a sudden people become much more interested, right? And then that's not an accident. And that says something deep about us that we could understand in evolutionary terms, and we might, in fact, want to creatively leverage to be better people. Yes. And to have better conversations. Definitely. Yes. So we, so That's what I think there's I'm nothing, doing. There's nothing that I say in opposition to religious dogmatism and religious sectarianism that discounts that reality. And that's a psychological reality. It's a cultural reality. And I'm not against making the most of it. My, my basic claim, however, is that we never need to believe that one of our books m may not have a human origin in order to do that effectively. You can, you can be just as compelled by the example of somebody like Jesus or some more modern person who, who strikes you as a moral hero and, a, and deeply wise 
without uh, believing anything on insufficient evidence. And, if, and, and as, I, you know, as you alluded to, purely fictional stories about superheroes can have immense effect on us. And that's something we could understand and also leverage. But again, that takes us out of the religion business, and that's, that's all I've been arguing for. So do you really believe that, um, that the belief in the supernatural aspect of these stories never alters the calculus of what people should do? That the divine nature of a story about Jesus doesn't motivate people to do something that they might not have the courage to do otherwise, the belief that they might end up in heaven because their good work is going to be observed doesn't alter their behavior? Well, yeah, I know it alters their behavior, but, but rather but often for the bad. Well, no, I mean, this is, what, this is what worries me about, I, mean, I think there's something, there, there's a profound net negative that we are pay, paying the price for every day by believing in paradise, right? A belief, a belief that this life, it probably doesn't matter very much at all because we get what we really want after we die is, forget about the evidentiary basis for that belief, it, it, it is, it's ruinous for prioritizing what we should be prioritizing in this life. And it, it's, I agree with that, by the way. Yeah. Okay, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 